Well, it's nice and chilly in my shop this morning, but I'm going to try to show you um, what I call skew practice. So when I haven't been on the lathe a lot, and I work a full-time job, so it's difficult to be on the lathe very much, what I like to do is put a scrap piece of timber on there and just turn. The skew takes practice, and you can kind of forget or, or lose the knack. So I'm going to show you a test procedure that I go through when I haven't been on there a lot. To use the skew, I put a line on here to show you that you should always stay below that line. If I'm using the skew upside down, I should stay below the line. If I'm using the skew with the toe, the heel down, I stay below. This is called the toe, this is called the heel. And so what we do is, you lay the skew on there, and rub the bevel, and then you lift the handle up till it starts to cut. Now it's cutting on the center, so I'm going to rotate it counterclockwise and move the cut down. See where the cut's working? I want to stay on that lower part. If you rotate the skew clockwise, you can see the cut gets up there, and that gets dangerous. That's where I could get a catch. So I'm going to go back down here. Now it's handy to, to rotate the skew and find out where that cut moves. Right now, I've got it all the way down to the heel. And you can see it kind of lifts fibers up. The reason that you might want to do that is Let's suppose you've got a shoulder like right there. As I'm cutting along right here, I want to cut up to that shoulder. So I would rotate the skew until the heel just touches. And that tells me where exactly where to stop. So the first thing you want to do is try a series of planing cuts just to kind of get comfortable with how your skew is cutting. Is it sharp enough? You know, is it producing a lot of shavings? And the main thing to always consider on the skew is to rub this bevel. So you have to visualize where that bevel is at all times. And again, I'll lay the skew up on there. I'll lift the handle till it starts to cut. And then I rotate the skew clockwise or counterclockwise to put the cut where I want it. Now you should practice right hand and left hand because there are times when you just can't hold the tool in the angle that you want. Now once I've kind of got the planing cut down and I feel comfortable, I do what's called barrel cuts. Probably the hardest thing to do is a uh, bead. And so this is kind of leading up to a bead. What I do is I take the toe of the skew, and again this is good practice because I want to turn, learn how to make a V and how to change the angle of the V. And you change the angle of the V by the angle you have the bevel. So the bevel is on that right side. If I want to make the bead wider, I tilt the skew flatter. I want to make it steep, I don't tilt the skew as much. So that gives me my practice using the V and making sure the toe of my skew is sharp. Now what I do is I simply turn with, like a barrel shape. And to turn the barrel shape, what you're having to do is, as the tool cuts this way, I'm having to lift the handle. And then I rotate the handle also because I want the cut to end up right on the heel. So the cut starts at about a third of the way down. And as I approach that juncture, I rotate the skew so the heel ends up cutting right there. And it helps if you visualize the shape and then watch the back side of the cut. Okay, then I go over, I can, you can either go left-handed at this point. Practice with your left hand. Again, try to visualize the cut. Try to rotate it so the cut ends up right on the heel. Or I can turn it with my right hand. I have to move my body around.
Again, the cut starts on the lower third, and as I get toward that point, I twist the tool clockwise, so just the heel is cutting. Now, if you go too far, let's go over here and do it. When, when you go too far, you come off the bevel, and of course it kicks backwards like that. So you have to really concentrate on it. The skew is a tool that requires very subtle movements. So the twisting that I'm talking about is, is very gentle. Now once I've turned barrels and I feel a little more comfortable how my tool's cutting, <coughs> then I might divide it, oops, kind of estimate how wide it is. About that wide. What I'm going to do now is kind of turn sort of a ball shape. A ball shape is a little bit easier to turn than a bead. <coughs> and it's probably easier if you take a parting tool at that point. Cut down a little bit. Now, people recommend putting a little line in the center <clears throat> so as you know where to start your cut. I don't usually do that when I'm turning, but it's not a bad idea. Start by cutting off the corner and start visualizing your ball shape. Now, as you rotate the skew, when you start the cut, you have to rotate the tool. But if all I do is rotate the tool, because the bevel is angled, I'm going to get a V cut. It's going to be a V shaped ball. So in order to get a ball with a side that's parallel, the tool has to be around right here. I hope you can see how my bevel is running. So as I rotate the tool, I have to move it to the left as well. Then because the center is lower than the top, I also have to lift up the handle. So there's three movements. Here as I rotate the tool and I lift the handle and I move the handle to the left. Now what I'm doing with my thumb is I'm kind of pushing because I want to concentrate on that bevel that's underneath. So I concentrate on that bevel and I concentrate on lifting the tool. Now I'm not pushing real hard Also, what you can't see from the camera position is I'm controlling this tool with my body. I'm rotating the tool with my right hand. I'm moving the tool with my body. And I'm lifting the tool up by using my knees, by straightening my knees. So now visualize that ball shape. There we go. Now it's just repetitive actions. Don't try to take a lot of wood off in one pass. When you try to take a lot off in one pass, you kind of, it's too easy to come off that bevel. That's kind of an ugly ball shape. <laughs> So as I go along, I watch the top, the back side of the turning. Now you'll notice I'm not doing this real fast. I'm, I'm trying to learn how to control the tool. The nice thing about doing it that way is if I don't move, for example, my hands don't move, my body doesn't move, the tool is anywhere. So I can make very minor changes. In this case, I'm going to move my body to the right and lift the tool up. So you can stop anywhere you want. Did I mention that the tool needs to be razor sharp? Or at least as sharp as you can comfortably get it. Now once I've turned my ball shapes and kind of gotten a little more comfortable with how the tool works. See that's what happens when you try to take too big a cut. Is it forces it
Then what you can do is you can practice cleaning off these. Now that now that I've got the easy ones, the ball shape, then we'll go toward a bead. So I've already got these turned, so now the bead has a much steeper side, so it's going to take more effort to kind of control it and lift up at the same time as I cut. But it's the same movement as the ball, it's just a little more exaggerated. Okay. Now just to show you that it does take practice and I haven't been able to turn with the skew a whole lot lately because I've been doing other projects. I'm going to turn my left hand and you'll see that I'm not quite as efficient left handed. Rotate the tool, push it in, lift it up, push in, lift up. There we go. You know, I get it done, but I'm not that good left-handed. You will turn a slight cove. So if you've already got this down here, you can kind of work on your cove cutting techniques. Cutting a cove is very difficult at the start. You have to start very, very gently. Let it establish a shoulder. And you're kind of limited in that uh, you can't cut a cove much steeper than this bevel is long. So if I want to cut a very short cove with a skew, I go to a tool with a much smaller bevel. You can see the difference there? So we Now normally I wouldn't cut a skew with I wouldn't cut a cove with a skew, I'd use a spindle gouge because it's easier. But a lot of times when you're doing a turning and you're trying to do production work, you've already got this tool in your hand, you might as well do it. But one other thing I like to do uh, that you can do with a skew that you can you can actually do an undercut. So I put the toe in there very gently and I'm moving the tool to the left. And what you have to do is keep it rotated clockwise very slightly because you don't want this edge touching right there. Obviously that'll cut it off. But it's astounding how deep I can go that way. It's very handy for some techniques. Anyway, I hope you've learned a little something today about how to play with the skew.